Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue-white cycling deck. And a fun backstory about this blue-white cycling deck is uh, some of you may have been following the channel since the Magic Duels days. And in Magic Duels, the last expansion that was added was the Amon Cat expansion. And in Magic Duels, you were also limited to only playing two of each rare and one of each mythic rare in your decks. And one of the cards I really wanted to build a deck around was Drakehaven, the three-man enchantment that says whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. And if you do, create a 2-2 blue Drake creature token with flying. But of course, because we were limited to only playing two Drake Havens in Magic Duels, it was a lot more difficult to build a consistent deck around it. But now on Magic Arena, we finally get to play with four copies of Drake Haven. So this is going to be one of the primary win conditions in our deck. And of course, thanks to Ikoria also introducing a whole bunch of cycling cards, we can now combine the Amon Cat cyclers with the Ikoria cyclers to form a powerful blue-white cycling deck. And one of the better cards in the deck is Flourishing Fox, which of course is a very powerful addition from Ikoria, and is one of the more threatening cards that you can play on turn 1. As a 1 mana 1 1 fox that says whenever you cycle another card, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Flourishing Fox. But if we draw the Flourishing Fox later in the game, we can always cycle it away for just 1 generic mana, so it doesn't even have a color requirement when we have to cycle it, making it a great play on turn 1, and then later we can just cycle it away. And then by having an early Flourishing Fox that can grow over time, we put a lot of pressure on the opponent, we kind of force them to overextend, and then we can potentially get them with our main deck, four copies of Wrath of God, since at the end of the day, our blue-white cycling deck isn't really an aggro deck, despite having the opening of Flourishing Fox, we're a much more controlling deck that can win the late game with the help of Drakehaven and the Abandoned Sarcophagus. And then at 2 mana, we also have the full playset of Drenith Healer, another Ikoria Cycler, 2 mana 2-2, two -two, that says whenever we cycle another card, we gain 1 life, and we can also cycle it for 1 mana. More often than not, we're going to be cycling the Drenith Healer, but every now and then, if we need a 2-2 two -two blocker, this will do. And then a powerful addition from Amon Cat is Sensor, a 2 mana instant that counters target spell unless its controller pays 1. And of course, in a cycling deck, it's not too difficult to keep up a bunch of mana, to keep up Sensor, and then if the opponent doesn't play into it, we can just cycle away a few cards end of turn, and if the opponent has a lot of lands in play, then we can also cycle away Sensor for just a single blue mana. And then at 3 mana, besides our 4 copies of Drakehaven, we also have 2 copies of Abandoned Sarcophagus, a 3 mana artifact, that says we can cast spells that have a cycling ability from our graveyard, and if a card that has cycling would be put into our graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled, we have to exile it instead. So Sarcophagus essentially lets us redraw all the cards we've cycled throughout the game, and give us a second chance at playing them out of the graveyard, which essentially translates into a lot of card advantage, and then every future card we cycle will also end up in the graveyard so we can replay it from there. And then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Cast Out, a 4 mana enchantment with Flash that we can play at instant speed, and when Cast Out enters the battlefield we can exile target a non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield, so just a very flexible and powerful removal spell that can get rid of some non-creature spells as well, like God Pharaoh's Gift or Ember Cleave, and can get rid of Planeswalkers as well, and then we can cycle it away for just a single white mana, making it perfect for this deck. And then we also have the full playset of Wrath of God, because we are kind of a controlling deck, despite having Flourishing Fox, so having a way to destroy all creatures for 4 mana is great. And then we also have the full playset of Hieroglyphic Illumination. More often than not, we're going to be cycling this for a single blue mana, but we can also cast it for 4 mana to draw 2 cards at instant speed. And then we also have the full playset of Curator of Mysteries as another cycling payoff, as a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Sphinx with flying that says whenever we cycle or discard another card, we get to scry 1. So this essentially turns all our cycling instances into opts, which is quite the upgrade. And we can also cycle the Curator itself for a single blue mana. And then last but not least, we've got the full playset of Shark Typhoon, which we're happy to cycle for X1 and a blue, making an XX Shark creature token with flying. And we can also decide to cast Shark Typhoon for 6 mana, saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue Shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. But more often than not, we will be cycling Shark Typhoon, making a Shark token at instant speed, and potentially enabling some other cycling synergies. 
and then going over the mana base, despite wanting to cast some expensive spells like Wrath of God, we are still only playing 22 lands since we plan on cycling a lot of cards, which will eventually translate into more lands. So we've got 5 planes, 5 islands, 4 glacial fortress, 4 hallowed fountain, and then also the full playset of irrigated farmland, which we can cycle for 2 mana. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Can always Wrath of God to reset the board, facing Lurus, so it could be a red-black Pyromancer deck, or it could be the Core Spirit Dancer deck. It looks like the Pyromancer deck. Yeah, I'll play the Farmlands turn one here. We've got some expensive cards we want to cast between Wrath, Curator, and Shark Typhoon. There's the Thoughtseize. Opponent being able to see the Wrath of God will definitely help them play around it. And that's the card they take. Alright, still early enough for us to want to play the Flourishing Fox here, I think. And then the plan was always to cycle the healer, but I guess I could have played planes and then keep up farmland. They could have a shock to take it out. And there's a Paramancer. Paramancer does negate the Flourishing Fox quite well, being able to chum block with the 1-1 tokens repeatedly. Alright, so the plan is to eventually kill them with Flyers. So I want to just hard cast the Curator, I think. This turn I could decide to make a 1-1 Shark. So I think uh, I'm just gonna shock myself. So I can attack with a fox and uh, make a 1-1 one -one shark. Cast out could also be a nice answer to a paramancer. Could be a claim the firstborn here, plus a village right to kill the fox. But that's alright, the fox was never gonna go the distance, we need to rely on the flyers instead. Also, if my opponent thought seizes me while I have a Curator of Mysteries in play, it also triggers the ability, because it doesn't only mention cycling, it also says discard. So that's also an interaction that can come up. Takes one of the Curators. I don't think the Red-Black Sacrifice deck has great answers to a 4-mana 4-4 four, four Flyer. No doubt we'll see a Village Rides here sacrifice a Fox, but I don't want to lose my Shark token. Alright, no Village Rides, that's surprising. Maybe... The so one mana three damage burn spell here, or reckless rage, I guess that works too. So I could cycle twice to save the fox, but I'm not really interested in saving it. Although the fact that opponent is playing reckless rage means that they do have an answer for a 4 4 flyer after all. Yeah, that happens. Could also decide to cast out the pyromancer. Opponent's got one card in hand, so if it's not a good one, Lurus isn't doing a whole lot. So, playing cast out plays around a second Reckless Rage the best. Playing Curator applies the most pressure here. I think I'm just going for the Curator. It doesn't seem like they have another Reckless Rage in hand, at least. If they play Croxa, I can maybe discard uh, Dranith Healer. Alright, there's the village right, so they must have drawn that this turn. Puts Lurus in hand. And they don't really have an attack. Would love to top deck Drakehaven as an enchantment that's difficult for the opponent to get rid of. So where do I start? Could cast out a Paramancer, which would be reasonable. 
her opponent plays a Croxa, they're pretty close to escaping it at the same time. So that's potentially a concern. Let's start by just cycling the healer. See what we can find. Illumination. That's not bad. So now that we have Illumination, trying to play a longer game makes more sense. So I think getting rid of the Pyromancer is fine. So let's just do that now before they get more value from it. And of course, since we're exiling the Pyromancer, we don't need to worry about Lurus getting it back. And then we'll hit for five. And if Croxa shows up, I can discard the farmlands, cry with a Curator, and still potentially draw two with Illumination. Try and find a Drake Haven. Sarcophagus would be great. Or maybe another Shark Typhoon. Take two. And another Village Rites to draw two. They might have a Reckless Rage to take out the Curator here. It's gonna be Lurus, but nothing to get back from the Graveyard at the moment. And the Pillar of Flame to take out the Shark. Fair enough. Alright, so... Could start by cycling the Farmlands, which still leaves enough mana to hardcast the Illumination afterwards. And there's a Drake Haven, perfect. So now that I found Drake Haven, I think I'm happy to just play it, uh, play my land out, and then play defense with the Curator. If they have another Reckless Rage, so be it. But I don't really want to raise four damage for four damage when they're gaining three. Doesn't seem productive. But if I do get to untap, I can take over with the Drake Haven. And if my opponent does have a Croxa to make me discard, I can still pay the one for Drakehaven, which will also make a Drake without me needing to cycle the Illumination. Same goes for Thoughtseize. Another Village Rites. That's fine. No attacks from Lurus. We'll just untap. And then cycle the Fox, which... Isn't too useful at this point. Make a Drake. Get this Cry 1. And we just want to find more cycling cards. Healer's perfect. So now I think I can afford to attack with a Curator. End of turn I can make a couple more Drakes. And we should be in good shape. Opponent moves to combat. We'll just trade for the Drake we have. And a Reckless Rage. So I don't think my opponent's playing any sweepers to kill my Drakes. Suppose they could have a Legion's End, but I don't necessarily expect it. Or we can kind of hatch our bets and cycle one card. That way we still get to scry from the Curator. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Get Sensor to interact early on. Wrath of God if we're up against a creature deck. Can cycle the healer in the meantime and then eventually start making sharks. Hope to draw into one of our cycling payoffs. Plan is to cycle healer end of turn. Double sensor, alright. Opponent on Grixis. Didn't think I'm cycling sensor quite yet, so let's just untap. Triple sensor. 
So if they're on some sort of control deck, I want to be able to counter like a Narset here, which is pretty backbreaking. As it stops all our cycling abilities, and yeah, speak of the devil. Now if they have another Narset, that's going to be bad. I might be forced to use double sensor in that case. So I'll still hang on to both for now. And then hopefully we can just Shark Typhoon for two end of turn. Opponent does nothing, so let's Shark Typhoon. And Drakehaven is a card I really want to resolve here. Although my opponent could Nicol Bolas me here, which would be bad. And I do have another Shark Typhoon I can cycle, so I think I'll just pass a turn. And then playing Drakehaven when we can cycle and make a Drake right away is also a lot more effective. Innocent Blood's fine. Cycle Typhoon. And the land is good. So I get to play Drakehaven, keep up sensor, and potentially cycle and make a Drake end of turn. Drakehaven's one of our better cards we can draw against the Grixis control deck, since they usually struggle to deal with enchantments. It's gonna be four mana Nicol Bolas. Now that one I can't quite censor here, but that's all right. Uh, in fact, I can also use Nicol Bolas's discard to still make a Drake. So let's do that. Discard censor, and then maybe our opponent won't even play around it. Could decide to play Curator of Mysteries and then still have the other sensor up. Different strategy would be to Wrath of God to reset the board, but we'll see what happens. A 4 4 flyer is a pretty annoying blocker against us since we kind of rely on the skies being clear. Not too many big flying creatures being played right now. Cry with a Carnarium, sure. Could cycle the Illumination here, and then hope to draw into a cast out, which can exile Nicol Bolas so we can attack past it. Don't think I'll need another Wrath. Alright, there's cast out. So I can cast out, still keep up sensor for what it's worth. And hit for six. And we'll keep the farmland in hand. We should have enough mana in play. Extinction of Unnaming Even will get rid of everything. That's fine. Probably time to cycle the sensor. Our opponent does seem to be playing around it pretty well. And Shark Typhoon's a nice draw. Could even consider hard casting it against the Grixis control. Problem with hard casting Typhoon is that I won't necessarily have a backup play to then make a shark, so yeah, I think probably still cycling it here. And then we can cycle for one less than the max, and then we can still make a Drake as well. Gives us a bit more power and toughness. Thought Erasure is going to force the issue. So Shark Typhoon for 4 here. And say goodbye to Wrath of God. Could have also potentially made a Drake using the Thought Erasure's discard ability. Well, we've got eight coming in. Opponent could have some spot removal here. Eliminate the shark, take four.
don't think the two line from Hallowed Fountain is going to matter, so I'm just going to keep that secret for now. In case they want to thought reassure me again. There's Nicol Bolas at long last. Sure. Killing a Drake. And they'll need a shock here to stay alive, but they don't. And the Drake tokens go the distance. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with double Drake Haven, so let's give this a shot. Probably okay to play Farmland turn one here. Might cycle Shark Typhoon for zero. Or I can main phase cycle Curator, or I can just do nothing. That's also allowed. Keep my cyclers for until after we play Drakehaven. So green creature deck, I'm gonna want to find my Wrath of God, so I think I will start digging for it. And it's probably too late for the Flourishing Fox to be super impactful. So we'll play Drakehaven. And then the game plan is Wrath of God to clear the board, and then Drakehaven's to repopulate it. Sir point on a mutate deck, perhaps. Alright, I could play another Drake Haven, although I wouldn't be able to make two Drakes. So maybe I'm better off just uh, playing a land and passing, and then I can make two Drakes end of turn by cycling Healer and Fox. Starix, alright, that's scary. Hopefully no Ugins. Sterix and another land. Opponent's not gonna attack. So let's cycle the fox. Pay one. Cycle another fox, pay one. Could also not pay the one since I'm digging for Wrath here. But... Can maybe get in for four firsts. Could also play another Drake Haven and then start making even more Drakes and try and block our way out of it. Opponent will probably be able to play Ugin anyway next turn, which is going to be pretty difficult to recover from. Um, kind of need to find both a Wrath and a Cast Out if that's the case. Or maybe try and get cheeky and find a sensor to counter Ugin if they don't have 9 mana. Alright, let's just take two, pass a turn, play defense, see what happens. Ooh, gem razor, that's unfortunate. It's gonna force the issue on the Drake Haven. So now what? Do I cycle Shark Typhoon, make a Drake? Or just cycle twice, probably just cycle twice in response here. Could also cast Illumination. But by making a few drakes, we can at least block the Sterics. Alright, that happens. And they hit an Ulamog. Uh oh. They don't get to exile two permanents. But now I basically need to find both Wrath of God to clear all the copies of Sterics as well as cast out for Ulamog. And now a Ceratops with Haste that I can block. Although that doesn't change our fact that we need to draw into a Wrath of God here. And then I'm going to be taking at least one hit from Ulamog. So if everything goes to plan, I'll be at one life here. Is basically what's going to happen. So, cycle healer. I guess maybe healer can function as a blocker for Ulamog, so I should be cycling Illumination. Because I wouldn't have the mana to play Illumination and cast a Wrath of God, so might as well just cycle it. Alright, there's a Wrath. So, step one attack with everyone. And then Wrath aboard.
And then I could play healer just to chump Ulamog. I guess that plays around another Ceratops. But I think I just gotta keep as many Cyclers as possible to draw into Cast Out. So we'll start here. And then... Play a land and pass. And a Crater Hoof Behemoth, nice. Alright, that'll do it. So let's see what we would have drawn here. Just a Shark Typhoon. We were pretty close to drawing a cast out there. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. The mana situation might be a little awkward due to the farmland, since I kind of want to play Fox on turn 1 and have Sensor up and then be able to play my 3 drops. So we might have to take a slightly different approach. Yeah, let's just play the farmland tapped and then I can still decide if I want to play Fox or keep up Sensor next turn. Opponent appears to be on a field deck, turn to search. Could be something else, I guess. I'll still keep up sensor for now. Maybe counter a Narset, which is going to be hard to beat otherwise. If they play an Uro, do I counter it? Yeah, probably. Watson, interesting. I mean, I don't care about the effect, but it probably implies that my opponent is playing with uh, the Lotus Fields, which can then generate a bunch of additional mana, which seems bad for me. Try and resolve Drake Haven while we can. And next turn we can start making Drakes. So we had to give up on the Flourishing Fox plan here, which could have been effective against a slower deck. Can apply a lot of pressure right away. But we also had a lot of cards in hand that didn't necessarily cycle, so... Crasis for two. Your opponent's definitely playing with Lotus Field. So I've got some options, but I don't hate just making a couple Drakes end of turn. Keeping up Sensor in the process. And then Sarcophagus is going to be a nice one to give us a bunch of card advantage later. Cycle, I guess, the Fox. Make a Drake and then still have Sensor up. Pono knows about Sensor now, so they might play around it. Alright, never mind. Could also let it resolve in the Wrath of God, but this seems more mana efficient. Wraths for days. Play Sarcophagus, and then I can still cycle Illumination and make a Drake. Could have also played the Fox end of turn there, but we're also keeping up Sensor, so that's nice. The Fairy Master of Time, that resolves. Now I can cycle these cards out of my graveyard, of course. But I can cycle Illumination, which will then end up in my graveyard where I can cast it normally for 4 mana. If I so desire. Points close to transforming a Skanta, so I could decide to exile it instead. I think this turn I don't hate just playing the Fox and then keeping up my counter magic and illumination. And then maybe end of turn I can also cast out something and just go after Teferi here. So yeah, they can transform a Skanta, so maybe I'm supposed to just exile it before that happens. Alright, sure.
And still play the fox. Could see a sweeper to reset the board. But we shouldn't have too much trouble to uh, make more drakes here. Alright, Gargaroth. I guess means I need to Wrath of God. Because it also triggers if it blocks, so can't really go after Teferi here. Alright. Pass the turn. Could still cycle the Curator, maybe I should have done its main phase just to hit my land drop. Because if we cycle it, we can still replay it with Sarcophagus, but not the other way around. Ooh, bombardments, I see. That's pretty good. Now with this can target enchantments. So they couldn't go after my Drake Haven or cast out. I think I'll hold on to the curator so we can make a Drake with it. Alright, so let's play this untapped. Pass with sensor and illumination available. And then I can potentially cycle into another cycling card to make some more drakes. It's a fairy in the meantime up to seven loyalty, so pretty close to ultimating, but not quite. If they play another Bombardment, I can censor it. If they play land first, I can potentially double censor it. Ooh, Ruin Blaster instead, with Kicker. Sure. Let's flow the mana. And then we'll cycle. Make a Drake. Fox can make another Drake. I'll just take the two damage here. We want to be able to pressure to ferry. So I could also play the Curator and be shields down on Sensor, but I kind of feel like Sensor might be important and then I can still Illumination end of turn. Wish I knew that was coming. Yeah, I'm glad we got rid of the Ascanta. So if they have another heavy hitter in hand, like a Krasis, we could be in trouble. But our Drakehaven and Sarcophagus are doing a good job. And yeah, Krasis for 5, that's unfortunate. I'll still censor it here so they don't get a creature half, but it does mean they get to draw a few cards still. I'm kind of surprised they did it for X equals 5, because if they did it for X equals 4, I wouldn't have been able to counter it, and it still would have been enough to hold off the drakes. And then I could cycle the farmland, but it's not going to make a drake. So I probably just hold it so I can play it. Alright, so we'll play farmlands. Go after Teferi. And then I can cycle Illumination, make a Drake. So I guess playing Fox is fine now. Still keeps up the other sensor if needed. And now the bombardment will finally cease to bombard my lanes. Unless they've got another one. 
Vanessa, ja. Well, this has been an interesting game so far. Both tanks doing what they're supposed to. Those are usually the more interesting games to watch as well. Don't really want to trade my fox for the rune blaster. So I'll just take five. Could have double blocked the land with fox and drake, but they might have potentially still played something second main that I wanted to censor. No shortage of Wrath of Gods. So the fox probably wants to stay home. Send all the drakes at Nyssa, and then they can minus three to ferry to save Nyssa. I guess there's not much I can do about it. Yeah, if I send the drakes at Teferi, I can take out Teferi. By going after Nyssa, I do force them to minus the Teferi at least, which could be useful. Because then one drake also gets phased out, making the Wrath of God more interesting. So I could Wrath right now, or I could play Curator of Mysteries, go Shields down on Sensor, but have an extra 4-4 Flyer that can block the 3-3s, three hope they don't have a Krasis. I think that's my play. They get one more draw with Teferi, there's a Blood Sun at long last, and a Lotus Field. But at this point they had infinite mana with Nyssa anyway, so we'll see if it matters. Maybe another Krasis here. Another Blood Sun. Sure. It is a nice answer to Field of the Dead as well, so that's part of the appeal of playing it. Uh oh, this is a lot of mana. They haven't looted with the fairy yet, so they're happy with the cards in hand. All right, the fairy discards Hinterland Harbor. And what is this going to be? Nissan taps Lotus Field for three more mana, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Ouch. Yeah, that's probably game over. Can minus four. Doesn't get rid of the lands. Or the Nyssa. Unlocks Ascanta. That was underneath the cast out. I mean... Yeah, I don't even get to kill one of the two planeswalkers. So I think I'm just dead on board. Can Wrath of God to clear the two lands, but then I'm dead to the three damage and the land being animated. Oh well, it's been a good run. Let's see what we would have drawn. Another healer. Alright, GG's. close game. If we had more mana we would have been able to leverage our sarcophagus a bit better so we could cast all those illuminations, but of course bombardment destroyed a few of our lands as well. This On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with double flourishing fox. Yeah, I'm down. So this might be a beatdown draw, where we just apply pressure mercilessly. So normally I would be okay keeping up sensor, but I think I'm gonna go for the throat here. Oh, 
Next turn I can decide to cycle Shark Typhoon or play Drakehaven. Opponent on the red green. This is a Bone Crusher Giant Stomp. Alright, that does take a bit of the wind out of our sails. Although Sarcophagus can still get back the Flourishing Fox eventually, for what it's worth. So we've got a few options here. I kind of want a fox to get as large as possible so it doesn't die to another Stomp or Domri's Ambush. Um, so let's cycle Typhoon now. And then I can decide whether I play the Hallowed Fountain tapped or untapped. Alright, I guess we can just play the Islands. Cycle Curator. And get in for four. And then next turn I could go Sarcophagus, replay a fox. Spellbreaker. It's gonna be a 4 4 on defense, but they can't really block profitably here. This is a matchup where I don't mind drawing cast out, since that's an answer for Amber Cleave, which is the card that's more likely to beat us than anything else. So, I think the plan is still Sarcophagus Replay Fox. Although, if they have a Domri's Ambush. They would get to kill the fox that way, whereas I could cycle Illumination, find another cycler, and get it out of range. So it's an interesting spot. I think I will cycle Illumination. And we'll cycle again. Keep on cycling. Alright. Our fox should be safe from a Domri's Ambush now, and it is lethal next turn, so they will have to chump it. Putting the Gruul deck under pressure, usually not what happens in the matchup when we have Wrath of Gods and Cast Outs as interaction, but that's one of the advantages of having Flourishing Fox. Now Rona, sadly, does make for a pretty nice blocker here, Death Dutch and Indestructible. If I had a Cast Out in hand for the Spellbreaker, our opponent would just be dead. So I can go digging with the Flourishing Fox, or I can switch game plans and just play defense with the Fox while we start making some drakes in the sky. Snow cast outs in the graveyard for Sarcophagus to get back. So I can go Drake Haven, Cycle Fox, make a drake. If they have an Ember Cleave next turn, I am looking at quite a bit of damage, but I can block the Spellbreaker, and I'm not dead to Ronas itself. So I think that's still the game plan. And then hope to draw cast outs. Or just more cyclers, I guess. They could also ambush with Ronas to kill my fox. That would work. It's gonna be a rubble belt rioters. Don't see that one very often. Opponent passes. Shark Typhoon can give us another flyer. Can play Sarcophagus and then play a couple foxes out of the graveyard. So we've got options, which is a good thing. Yeah, let's go Sarcophagus. Play Double Flourishing Fox. Or I could keep up Sensor, but I don't think I'll be able to Sensor anything significant at this point. Or I could Shock in the Hallowed Fountain Cycle Farmlands. Wouldn't be making a Drake with it though. And then just play Farmland Tapped. Since we've got Shark Typhoon to cycle. And I'll keep the Drake token on defense too here. I don't want to lose to an Amber Cleave because I didn't keep up enough blockers. Because the late game is looking very good for us. Spellbreaker. 
spell breaker gets pumped. Pumped again. So I can just go chump, chump, take eight, these don't trample, and then kill them on the way back. Seems good. Alright, sweet. So yeah, seeing the power of Sarcophagus alongside Drakehaven, a nice duo, and then the Flourishing Fox to apply a lot of early pressure, so... The deck can be flexible, it can start out with a turn 1 Fox and be the beatdown, or it can play a control game with the Wrath of Gods, a couple counter spells and removal spells sprinkled in, and eventually close out the game with a few flying tokens. So yeah, overall I've been having a lot of fun with a blue-white cycling deck, it's not going to be the most competitive deck out there, but definitely capable of winning some games. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.